darling. I've lost an aftershave. Abdullah is in his late thirties and lives in the Midlands. He's a practicing Muslim, out to his family, and well known on the local Asian gay scene. However, he still does not feel safe enough to reveal his identity on television. Let's go and enjoy ourselves. to stop filming here because um, all the Asians that are at the club here are getting very nervous. They don't know what it's about and they don't want to be identified. Everybody's very cautious of each other. They're very scared of being outed. I know of, of several gay people from my community who are gay, who come on the gay scene. But if I ever saw them, I wouldn't say hello to them because I would not want to jeopardize the situation they're in. Abdullah prays regularly and has been on the Hajj pilgrimage. Despite being a practicing Muslim, his homosexuality means he feels he's not welcome at his local mosque. Usually when you do ablution, you're supposed to wash whatever action you're performing, you do it three times. I prefer to pray at home because every time I've actually been to the mosque, I've been treated like a leper, as if they don't actually want me there. Since I've actually come out, every time I've been to the mosque, even when I want to speak to somebody, they just turn their face away. Abdullah had his first gay sexual experience when he was 15, but kept it secret from his family. Four years later, he agreed to an arranged marriage with a woman. She always used to ask me, why is it that we don't have a relationship like other people, other married couples do. Marriage wasn't consummated till about four years later, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I never wanted children because I knew it would actually complicate things. It happened. And I think it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Abdullah and his wife had three children, and while they were together, he remained faithful to her. Then, after nine years, the marriage fell apart. She went off with another man, leaving me with the children. My youngest child was about 14 months old. I cooked for them, cared for them. I gave up my job because I couldn't work and look after the children at the same time. But a year later, there was a knock at the door. I went to open the door. I was pushed aside, beaten up, and the children were taken away from me. Abdullah obtained visiting rights to his children and saw them regularly. He continued to conceal his homosexuality and remained close to his children. It was only when he fell in love with a man that Abdullah finally came out. And that's when things started going haywire. I was beaten up on several occasions. I had death threats. There were sermons in the mosque basically reciting the scriptures in the Quran where gays should be stoned to death. I think the most hurtful part was when I visited my mother. She'd have a separate plate and a separate cup for me to eat from and drink from. So don't infect other people. Finally, Abdullah's wife stopped him from visiting his children. It's now been six years since he's seen them. She felt um, I would influence the children that they might turn out gay or something ridiculous like that. Every time I try to enforce the order, um, the children turn around and say to the, uh, the authorities that we don't want to see our father. Emotionally, I'm so far, far down that I can't do anything to bring myself up. And it's my daughter's birthday in three weeks' time. And last night I came home and I sat down and cried and I cried and I cried. And you... Two years ago, Farah told her parents she's gay. She was 17. 
she was forced to leave home and moved in with her non-Muslim girlfriend. Ice gems. That says how much I love her. Despite living away from home, Farah maintains a close relationship with her family, but it's a constant battle. She's recently discovered that her mother plans to visit relatives in Pakistan, and for the first time, Farah has not been invited. She's afraid her mum will tell the family she's dead. I think my mum would rather say I've been hit by a truck than say I'm gay. The first time I left home, I was really afraid that I, I would never be able to see my family again. And I thought my parents would actually tell them I've been involved in an accident, so that's, that's always something to worry about. Farah is an observant Muslim, which makes her struggle even more difficult. She prays when she can, fasts during Ramadan, and doesn't drink alcohol. But she believes Islam can accommodate homosexuality. Because Islam isn't that easy to kind of follow, and it would be so easy to kind of fall back and say, hey, you know, I'm gay and whatever, God's condemning me anyway, and it's, it's easy to kind of fall back on that. But to me, because both parts of that, my sexuality and my religion, they're both integrated parts of me. You know, I can't abandon one for the other. To me, jihad is an internal battle for good, and I feel like I do that every day of my life. To my parents, jihad would be to kind of cast the whole sexuality demon away. I mean, that to me would be the sin. But, I mean, they just don't see that. I first kind of had feelings towards, you know, women when I was 11. I used to hate myself. It was like, oh, I can't be gay because this, 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 I'm, I'm Muslim. It was so bad that I used to hurt myself, cutting myself up, uh, blades, knives. I actually felt at a point that killing myself would be less of a sin than being gay. I've tried to kind of turn myself towards men. You know what teenage crushes are like, you know, Brad Pitt or whatever. And it just never worked for me. And there's a point where you kind of just, you know, you can't. It's just like physically and mentally impossible. You just don't. It's not a choice. Um, if I did have the choice, I mean, I, you know, I do what's right for my parents, but things, life isn't that easy. In two months, Farah will go to university. She's afraid she won't have a family to come back to. I really do wish we could kind of resolve this because um, I'd like to get my partner involved in my family and, you know, vice versa.